all so much for coming this evening. Really appreciate it. The young people have been working very hard. And uh, we have six sisters uh, this evening. And uh, I think we're really going to enjoy the production written by Sarah Packa. Directed by Sarah Packa. She directed six young ladies. And it all came together. <laughs> so. Maybe we should talk to her before. <laughs> uh, you know, I've heard nothing but great things about the cast and the artwork. And uh, so again, thank you for being here. Just a couple reminders. Uh, first of all, if you are connected to the internet with a device, if you could disconnect, that would help our sound and light system to work better. It's kind of like thinking about being on an airplane. Or an airplane <laughs> okay, we won't be passing snacks down the aisle. <laughs> That would be helpful. Uh, secondly, please note flash photography during the production. There will be an opportunity afterwards to take pictures. And then there will be an intermission. During the intermission, we'll have a few snacks for sale back in the lobby if you would uh, like to take advantage of that. All right, let's have a word of prayer. And I'll get ready right to the podcast. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for each one uh, who has worked so hard on this production. Thank you for their talents, their ability, their commitment, their teamwork. And I pray, Father, that you would bless their efforts this evening. And the Lord, we just thank you so much for the blessing of being able to be here and to be present together and to enjoy this evening together. In Jesus' name, amen. Once upon a time, there were five very intelligent young women. Anthea, Angelica, Adriana, the, the twins, twins, Adelina, and Annabella, who lived with their mother and father, and, and one very silly sister named B. The five sisters read deep and meaningful books. They discussed metaphysics, aesthetics, cosmology, epistemology, and the general state of the world. When the five sisters were not reading or discussing, they spent their time working on projects to improve themselves. They painted, sang, danced, took long walks to observe nature, and if there was nothing better to do, helped with, with the chores. chores. Now one day it happened, as it so often does in stories and in life, that one fine spring day, news of a momentous and life-changing nature arrived. Girls, girls, gather round, gather round. You too, be. Yes, 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 father. Sir. Yes, father. Girls. Wife, I'm afraid that I bring news of a momentous and life-changing nature. Are we moving? A new library? I knew it. The country's going to war. The 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 world. World. Girls, peace, please. Let your father continue. No, we are not moving. Nor is a new library being established in our hamlet. Nor, thankfully, is the country going to war. But alas, I must inform you that, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are lamentably and utterly financially ruined. How much ruined financially? Regrettably, very, very financially ruined. <laughs> but there is still money to attend lectures at the university? No. Surely I can keep up my museum no. pass. They just developed a much more powerful telescope, and nope. I, I have five books on hold at the bookshop. No. I suppose we'll have to let go our newspaper subscriptions? No. What? what? I mean, yes. We'll have to budget, scrimp, save, retrench, and generally tighten our belts. But, but Father, father I have to say, that is quite enough. This is not your father's fault. And perhaps it is not forever, but it is for now. We must not lose our heads. We must be strong. Yes, yes Mother. Father. B? Yes, Father? Do you have anything to say? I don't think so. Do you understand what is going on, B? I think so. We haven't any money, so we can't spend any money on anything as there isn't any money to be spent. Little sister, you have a tremendous grasp of the obvious. Don't mind her, Adelina. She doesn't bother about money. Give her a storybook or a blue sky, and she can waste away hours, nothing in her head at all. In this, the sisters were not particularly just. It is important to note that this scene has not presented the five intelligent sisters in the most favorable light. We are not always at our best when news of a momentous and life-changing nature arrives. So perhaps we might extend them a little grace, and hope that in future scenes, they behave themselves with more grace and wisdom. 
The next few days were dark and difficult. The family had to sell their beautiful home and move into a much smaller house where the six sisters shared one long attic bedroom. They sold off anything of value. Paintings, rugs, furniture, china, an antique clock, six Dresden shepherdesses, a carriage, four horses. They sold off anything of value, and they let the servants go. They canceled subscriptions, memberships, and standing orders. And the sisters sold or packed away their beautiful dresses of silks and satins, and donned ordinary clothing of cotton and wool. The six sisters settled down to discover a way forward in this new and untoward circumstances. Light is keeping me awake. I'm very sorry, Annabella. Why are you awake? I'm reading. D'Artagnan is racing to retrieve the Queen's diamonds before the King notices they are gone. It's very exciting. Evidently. Wait, how did you get money for a new book? Be it's quiet. I'm trying to sleep. You be quiet, Adelina. It isn't a new book. What is it a new book? The book I'm reading. You bought an old book? I didn't buy it. We had it already. You're rereading an old book? Some books are better the second time, or even the third. Why? Why? It's the middle of the night. Stop grousing, Adriana. The rest can sleep more soundly without your snoring. I do not snore. Yes, you do. At least snoring is considerably more ladylike than drooling. Like you drool, Angelica. I would chuck this pillow at you, but I just got it fluffed into the right shape. Besides which, it's covered in drool. <gasps> Is it morning already? No, silly. Then why did you throw your pillow at me? I didn't. Adriana did. Did not. Did too. I meant to hit Angelica. You need to improve your aim. Why are we all up? Blame B. B. I was reading. Well, now that we're all awake. <sighs> now that we're all awake, I propose we discuss the general state of the world. In particular, the pecuniary straits we face. You mean we need to figure out a way to make money? Yes, but not just money. We need to find a way to get back all of the things we've lost. Lost? Yes, you do realize that if we have no new money, there will never be any anything. No new clothes or books or shoes. No more classes or museums or trips. No canvases to paint or music to play, nothing. Not even rooms of our own. I miss my room. I do understand that. Then, then how, how can you be so calm? calm? Oh, I don't know. I suppose it's because I have five very intelligent sisters who I am confident can solve this problem. Oh, oh that's rather kind of you, B. Thank, Thank you, B. We'll do our best not to disappoint. But we probably will anyway. Annabella! <laughs> don't yell, you'll wake mother and father. It's all very well to say we need to do something, but what exactly should we do? I don't know if it helps at all, but in books and stories, characters are constantly going out into the world to find their fortunes. They don't seem to have much of a plan as they go, but they seem to find one as they're going. Perhaps finding your fortune isn't something you can do sitting down. That's an interesting argument. So you're saying tomorrow morning we should just go out and... I think it's a rather beautiful idea. I think it's a rather practical idea, seeing as none of us know how to find our fortunes anyway. There's that. Uh, there's nothing for it, sisters. We must go out into the world and restore our family fortune. Will you join me? Will you rise up out of your beds of sloth? I do not sloth. Yes, you do. Shh. <laughs> out of your beds of sloth and despair? Will you come with me on a grand adventure into the world to restore the fallen fortune of our father's house? Rise up, sisters! Rise up and join me as stalwart women ready to face the unknown, to meet every challenge, to solve every puzzle. We will not flinch, sisters, will we? No. no. We will not falter. No. no. We must not fail. For the honor of our father's house, our battle cry is... Uh, our battle cry is... Excelsior! 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 Across the kingdom, another family was facing a crisis of their very own. 
that happened to be in the royal household and the very family of the king himself is besides the point. You must go out, son. You absolutely must go out and find your fortune. But why, father? I already have a fortune. I am a prince, after all. I don't mean money. I mean, you must find a way for yourself, a path, a direction. You sit around the castle all day making lists. I love lists. <laughs> I make very good lists. Yes, but it's slightly off-putting, and the ladies don't like it. The ladies. <laughs> and the men think it's weird. Really? <laughs> you have to go out and do something. It's all very well making lists, but eventually you have to do something. Isn't making lists doing something? No. Really? Well, I see what you mean, Father. But do you, my son? I think so. I should stop making lists. Yes. And? And? Go out and find your fortune. <laughs> right, right, my fortune. Yes. Do you happen to know where I left it? You didn't leave it anywhere. Then how did I lose it? You didn't lose it. You never had it to begin with. Oh, right. That clears things up. Good, good. Well, I will let the darts know you'll be leaving in the morning to find your fortune. In the morning. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Royal list bearer. Highness? Yes, I need to make another list. Another list. We will call this list Finding My Fortune. Finding My Fortune. Have you ever had to find your fortune, Royal List Bearer? Seriously? I make a job for. I'm, I write a list for you, and this is worst job ever. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea it was so bad. Well, that is about to change. Tomorrow, you and I are off to seek my fortune. So why do I have to go? Because you have to carry the list. You're the royal list bearer. Right. All right. Do you have the title written down yet? Finding my fortune. Yes. Well, I don't think there's a standard formula for finding one's fortune. So perhaps we can make a list of possibilities from uh, history and literature. Should I write that? Uh, no, no, no. Item one. Kill a troll. Kill a troll. I think they mainly reside under bridges. <laughs> Item two. Item two, yes? I have no idea. Princes in books, slay dragons, rescue damsels in distress, and best giants. I don't do any of those things. My father's right. I'm a completely useless prince. Useless prince? No, 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 no. <laughs> don't write that. So, what exactly do you want on the list? I, I, I don't know. Oh. Actually, perhaps we could try going with another list. No, no, no! We need a list! Lists are important! They keep us organized and ensure we don't forget anything. We'll riff off the classics. Keep it simple. Kill a troll, rescue a damsel in distress, best a giant, and vanquish a dragon. Ambitious. All right, Royal well, Miss Mara. We have a plan. Oh, good. Pack your, pack your bags. We'll leave in the morning. Oh, all right. Oh. And I think it would be best if we didn't mention that, you know, I'm the prince. I think people treat me differently when I tell them. Yes, Your Highness. All right. Where is the nearest bridge? I don't know. Well, we should get a map. Write that down. No. The next day, the sisters rose up early, washed their faces, brushed their teeth, combed their hair, made their beds, and ate a healthy, balanced breakfast. All right, sisters, it's time. Why do I suddenly feel afraid? I don't feel afraid, just very small. It's an awfully big world out there. Big and mean. Wait, sisters, before you leave, I packed your lunches. Lunches? lunches? Yes, it's no good adventuring on an empty stomach. Thank, Thank you, B. Dear sisters, have a wonderful adventure. Wait, what, what will you do, B? Oh, I suppose I'll clean the house, do the laundry, keep the fires going, and have a hot meal waiting for you, mother, and father when you all return. Uh, won't you be bored? Oh, I don't think I'll have time. 
Now off you go, my dear sisters. You have fortunes to find. Thank you, B. The five sisters journeyed together until they came to a crossroads. Crossroads are rather magical places. They are gateways to adventure. Where one turning can change your life forever. Which way? To maximize our chances of success, we should each choose one way. I don't want to go alone. Of course not. You're such a baby. Am not. Are too. But I'll go with you just so you don't feel alone. I think you're afraid too. Am not. Are too. Twins, please. We agreed that we need to be stalwart, fearless. We did not agree to fearless. She's right. We did not agree to fearless. Excelsior, sisters. Well, we're afraid, but we still have a mission to accomplish. We'll probably fail, but we have to try. Honestly, Annabella, you need to work on your pep speeches. I like to know the worst possible outcome. We noticed. Excelsior? Excelsior. Excelsior. And so each sister chose a path. Waving goodbye to one another, they headed off to find their fortune. Knowing in some small way that when they met again, they would all be very different people. Changed in some way by the journey they are about to begin. And so it was that Anthea came alone to a bridge spanning a swiftly running river. Stop! Excuse me? Pardon me, my lady. I do not wish to appear ungallant, but I must cross this bridge first. Why? What? Why do you have to go first? Well, as it happens, I am out in search of my fortune, and I have a list of projects I have to complete. And crossing a bridge first is on there? No, no, no. <laughs> But killing a troll who lives under the bridge is on the list. Would you like to see the list? This is, uh, my friend. Friend? We're friends behind you. We, we could be friends. <laughs> my friend, who just so happens to be carrying in his pocket a list of the tasks I plan to complete in order to find my fortune. Oh, well, no thank you. I don't need to see the list. Are you sure? It's quite a nice list. No, I'm good. Well then. You believe there is a troll under this bridge? Well, I hope there is. I can assure you, sir, there is no troll under this bridge. <laughs> if it's not too much trouble, I'd rather ascertain that fact for myself. Well, I have been across this bridge more times than I can count, and not once have I ever seen or heard a troll. Hmm. Well, they can be very sneaky. <laughs> trolls? Tr trolls are sneaky? I'm sure if they tried, they could be. Have you ever met a troll? No. Have you? No. Oh. Right. Well, as it happens, I too am out in search of my fortune, and I would hate to stand in the way of a fellow fortune seeker such as yourself, so after you, good sir. Thank you, my lady. That's very kind. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Are you hailing the troll? I am. <laughs> I've never hailed a troll before, so I might not be doing it quite right. Come out, troll! Come out and fight me, troll! Fight me like a man! I command you to come forth and fight! <sighs> I don't think that there's a troll under this particular bridge, my lady. It's safe for you to cross. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Uh, good luck finding your fortune. I don't suppose you've seen any hints of a fortune just lying about today? Alas, no. Oh. Though I did see a help wanted sign at the bookseller's shop. The, the bookseller's shop? Yes, though I suppose that sort of thing isn't really finding your fortune. Well, I don't think so, but to be perfectly honest, I've never had to find my fortune before, so I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to look like. I know what you mean. It makes it beastly difficult to find, doesn't it? It does. Well, goodbye. I'll give a shout if I find any trolls. Do. Thanks. Wait. Yes? I think you are very brave. Me? Well, I didn't think so at first, but upon further consideration, I realized that facing something as fearsome as a troll is an act of bravery. But there wasn't a troll. But you didn't know that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on. Is he gone? <laughs> Who? That nasty man. Uh, yes. At last.
own meat. So you're not trying to eat me? No. No? Well, what are you doing? Hiding? You're using this woman as a shield. You were trying to kill me. She does have a point. You were trying to kill him. Perhaps if you were to put your sword away and this troll unhands me, we could all sit down like civilized people, or beings, and discuss the situation rationally. Yeah, I'm willing. Fine by me, not sitting by him. Fine, sit by me. Well, this is uh, nice. Yes. Uh, is anyone hungry? Me. Here. Thanks so much, man. Right. Sir, that was the lady's lunch. They gave it. I did. Although I didn't expect. More? Sorry. You and me. So, why do you feel the need to kill a troll? I was under the impression oh. that trolls eat people. Lies, lies, lies. Yes, yes, what do you eat? Mostly goats. Not people. <laughs> you need new ears. Peoples is nasty. All bones. Fine. What are you doing under the bridge? That's where I work. Quick commute. More leisure time nights. What? I care for the bridge. Without me, bridge might float right into the river. You care for the bridge? Always. Am I Father, and my grandfather, and my great grandfather, and my great great grandfather. You come from a long line of bridge caretakers. Do you work for the kingdom? You still. Now? Just work. But who pays you? No one. That is very civic minded of you. Who you call a civic minded? No, 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 no. I just meant that it's very good of you to take care of the bridge, even though nobody pays you. It is very good of you, sir. I, do you even have a name? Carl. I was expecting something more troll like. Yeah, trolls is underappreciated. Clearly. Well, Carl, will you ex please accept my apologies for threatening you? It's fine. And I'll make sure you receive payment for your work on the bridge. Uh, must Dr. King for that. I might know someone. Might know someone. Oh. <laughs> well, now that's all settled. Um, Carl, I'm very pleased overall to have met you. Keep up the good work on the bridge. And you too. Uh, Henry. Right, and you too. This is... F Frank. What? You don't even know my name? You can tell me your name. <laughs> I, I really must be going. I still have my fortune to find. But I was right, wasn't I? About? That you are brave. Heat of the moment, I'm afraid. But thank you, my lady. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Carl. Bye, lady. <laughs> bye, bye you, too. Troll, I have learned much from you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Be good, Harry. I have to find a goat for supper. It, it's Henry. What? Never mind. You too, Carl. <laughs> well, we learned something, didn't we, Liz Bearer? What a lovely girl that was. Peachy. It wouldn't hurt you to be a little more supportive. <laughs> oh, I feel this, Fire. What is wrong with you? I couldn't possibly say it. Why not? Because I, I might get anger, your highness. I give you permission. Oh, you won't cut off my head? No. <laughs> or throw me into deepest dungeon? Of course not. Oh, or feed me to wild beasts. That's disgusting. <laughs> All right. Actually, I want to go home. I mean, so do I. <laughs> to my wife and son. You have a wife and son? Exactly. My little son just born three weeks ago. And I just ripped you away from your family without warning or apology? I'm so sorry. I really am a worthless prince. Oh, typical, I imagine. Would you like to see a picture? Of course. This is the picture we made last week. A fine looking son. Thank you, Your Highness. Well, Royal Whisperer, do I even know your name? Thomas. Really? Yeah, my name is Thomas. Wow. Thomas Edward Roger Feder III. <laughs> well, Thomas Edward Roderick Frederick III, have no fear. I release you. Go to your family. I will find my fortune on my own. Are you sure? Yes. Just, just give me my lists. I can manage the rest, I think. The recent lists? No, all the lists. I want you to have a complete vacation from list bearing. Okay. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, variations in frog species? Craftsmen necessary to settle a successful village? Six habits of an effective leader? All types of chocolate? 
Oh man, books I've read? How many are there? I have never taken account. I, I can't blame you. Just, just leave them. Thank you for faithfully bearing these lists for so long. Forgive me for behaving so disgracefully. It's fine. It is your highness to write to act. No, I do not believe anybody should behave badly if they can possibly help it. Please, go to your family, give your regards to my wife, to your wife and son. Oh, you're a good man, your highness. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you're someday. Best. Thank you very okay. much. And best luck to you as you seek your fortune. Thank you. Company. Both had learned something. The prince had learned not to take helpers for granted. They have busy lives too. The royal list bearer had learned that often what looked like bad intention was only thoughtlessness. Given a chance, occasionally people will impress you. In another part of town, down the dusty road came a wizened old woman. Very old. Very, very old. Hey! <laughs> Carrying a basket, full and heavy. The road was rough, and the old, old, old woman slipped, and her basket fell, and the contents were scattered. Oh, bother. My apples bruised, my canned goods dented. <gasps> Let me help you. Oh, thank you, my dear. Cream of toadstool makes a delicious casserole. Pickled frogs in olive oil. Interesting. You can only find them at the import shop. Absolutely delicious. Especially on a finely toasted piece of rye bread. Maybe a slice of cheese. A very thin slice of cheese. Nothing too strong, or it will overpower the delicate taste of... Ho, ho! I know what you are, and I know that you must give me whatever I wish for. I what? You have to grant me my wish. I'll do nothing of the kind. What would you learn if I just gave you anything you wished for? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure I particularly want to learn anything. You and every other human being, seriously, the absolute cheek, lumbering about. <gasps> I do not lumber. Lumbering about, demanding wishes of absolute strangers. I may be what I am. A fairy godmother. A fairy godmother. But I am not your fairy godmother nor am I used to having rude little girls demand wishes of me. I grant wishes as I wish, not as you want. But I need you to grant me my wish. And why is that? Because our family fortune has been utterly ruined, and my sisters and I are determined to restore it. But that means I have to find my fortune. I haven't found my fortune. I've looked all day, but I found you. You can find my fortune. If I find a fortune, it will be my fortune. <laughs> but then you could give it to me and it would be mine. But then you would not have found your fortune. You would have been gifted your fortune. Potato, potato. No, you must find your own fortune. I can't find it for you. You mean you won't. Uh, potato, potato. <laughs> if you won't help. I didn't say I wouldn't help. Your family needs money, right? Yes. I need a gardener. Uh, what? A gardener. I'm getting too old to spend hours on my knees pulling weeds, planting bulbs, pruning hedges. <laughs> I can't garden. Uh, because? Because, I don't know, it might be fun squidging around in the dirt, planting things, watching them grow. We had a garden at our home before. It was a beautiful garden. We had seven gardeners who cared for every blade and stem. We weren't allowed to touch anything, though. Sounds like a perfectly useless garden. Come to my garden, you can touch all the plants. <laughs> I can't come muck about in your garden. Why not? Because I have to find my fortune. How do you know this isn't your fortune? Because, I don't know, it just isn't. How do you know? Because, I don't know, it just isn't. Excellent piece of reasoning, girlie. <laughs> Your fortune's supposed to be something big and glorious and grand. Why? I don't know. Thank you for your offer, but I have to find my fortune. Hmm. Some people make no sense. No sense at all. I beg your pardon. You're a silly girl. I can't sit around here talking with silly little girls. 
My house is the purple one, out beyond the village. I'm not silly. That's what you think. Give me my wand. For a handkerchief. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else I can do to help? No, I don't suppose you're particularly clever. Not particularly, I don't think. <laughs> well, that's a shame. I could really use some advice. I'm happy to listen. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm out there trying to find my fortune. <laughs> Me too. Really? Have you found it yet? No. Me neither! <laughs> Is that why you're crying? No. Sort of. Not really. I met a fairy godmother! <laughs> that sounds useful. Not much. She refused to grant me my wish. <laughs> Is that why you're crying? No. Sort of. Not really. <laughs> she offered me a job. A wonderful job as a gardener. Planting things. <laughs> watching things and watching them grow. And trimming edges. <laughs> That's why I'm crying. <laughs> as I said before, I'm not particularly clever, but it sounds like this fairy godmother offered you something you want. I do, but I'm supposed to be out there looking for my foreign stupid fortune! Maybe you could just work in the garden until your fortune came along? Isn't that cheating? I don't know. It sounds like cheating to me. Because... Because I would enjoy working in the garden more than I could ever possibly enjoy working about looking for my fortune. I, I mean, if you need money, I, I'll be... do. There hasn't been a new decent meal or a bill paid in weeks. We're broke. Well, maybe you could look at gardening as a way to earn money for now. And then, once things have settled down, you can go out and look for your fortune. But, in the meantime, you can make money and have a good time doing it. What a lovely idea. You like it? I love it. And you said you weren't clever. I have been often assured that I'm not. Well, I don't know who told you, but they were wrong. Thank you. Don't mention it. Oh. I'm afraid your handkerchief is a bit soggy. No, you know what? Keep it. <laughs> Thank you. Plenty more. And good luck finding your fortune. Thank you. I already have a job. A job with no fortune. No damsels in distress. No giants. No dragons. And I'm hungry. Oh, oh. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't watching where I was sweeping. Oh, your shoes are all over with dust. It oh. won't take a minute. Let me No, leave. no, no, please, please. It was an accident. But I made the mess. Don't, there is no harm done. A woman should not be made to polish shoes. See? Look. Really, no harm done. What lovely shoes. My father used to have a fine pair of shoes like those. Wherever did you get them? They were given to me. Ah, I was just about to have a cup of tea. Would you care to join me? I confess to being absolutely famished. And I have a whole kettle of stew in the boil. Wait here. I won't be a moment. Wait. Why? Because you're hungry? No other reason? Should there be? No. The prince sat and waited in anticipation. It was rather a new experience for him, having kindness offered not because he was a prince, but because he was a fellow human in need. His shoes were dirty. These silly old shoes. Whatever possessed me to wear these on an adventure? But his heart was 
Kathy, here you are, a big bowl of stew. Thank you, my lady. It isn't fancy, but it's filling. This is delicious. Is it chicken? Yes. And what are these little orange bits? Carrots? <laughs> oh. You've never eaten carrots before? My father can't abide them, so they're not allowed to serve them at, at our house. Oh, we don't eat beets. Does anyone? <laughs> <laughs> are you not eating, my lady? B. Pardon? No one has called me my lady in quite some time. My name is B. B-E-A? I'm Henry. I'm very pleased to meet you, Henry. Did you make this? You're a wonderful cook. I'm afraid not. But I have several very useful cookbooks, and I can follow directions. Well, you're excellent at following directions. Thank you. Do you live here alone? No. With my mother and father and five sisters. Five? Yes. They are out finding their fortunes, but they should be back soon. I, too, am supposed to be seeking my fortune. It's been a horrible time doing it. I had a list. Oh, somewhere. Oh, gracious me. Oh, you have a great many lists. Oh, no. Countries with surplus wheat. <laughs> Herbs with medicinal properties. Things that go bump in the night. <laughs> Toys I won't I'll buy. take that one. <laughs> I like lists. I see. They involve patterns and classifications. They're, they're organized. They're swift, beautiful, elegant. They're like music. I've never heard list described quite so well. Thank you. For what? For giving me a new perspective on something I thought tedious. Lists? Tedious? Never. Well, now I know. Thank you, my lady, for this wonderful meal. But I must get back to finding my fortune. And I have eight beds to make and eight dinners to prepare. Thank you, my lady. It was not long after that mother, father, and the five sisters returned home for dinner. Everyone had something to share. B, the stew is delicious. Thank you, mother. Thank, Thank you, B. Do I detect a hint of sage? Yes, father. Delicious. So, did anyone have any adventures today? Yes, did anyone find their fortune today? No, but I met a fairy godmother. <laughs> a fairy <laughs> godmother? <laughs> yes, fairy godmother. And she offered me a job as her gardener. I love it. Look, I have dirt under my fingernails. Disgusting. <laughs> and I'll earn money every week, and as many fruits and vegetables and flowers as I can carry. I know it's not the same as finding my fortune, but please, Father, don't be disappointed. How could I possibly be disappointed? Because I haven't found my fortune yet. I will eventually, but for now at least we have a little food and money. And you like gardening? I love it. Did you know that there are 400 different varieties of cabbage? Helpful, if anyone actually liked cabbage. <laughs> <coughs> I met a troll today. A troll? A troll? A troll? What? Yes. I learned that trolls do not eat people. They keep our bridges in repair, and they eat mostly goats. That is actually useful information. <laughs> and I took a job at the bookseller shop. Do you like working at the bookseller shop? Well, I didn't think I would at first. I spent hours unpacking boxes and alphabetizing, which was tiring, and it made my arms hurt. But the bookseller asked me to devise a new system to reorganize all the books. And in the afternoons, when the chores are done, if there are no more customers, I can read. And I will get paid money each week, and I will get a new book each week to take home. <gasps> new books? That's right, new books for everyone. Make a list, you can each take turns choosing a new book. If you have never really needed something, you will not understand how happy the family was that night. And it is impossible to explain just how proud mother and father were of their daughters, so I won't even try. Anthea and Adelina went to sleep that night, thinking about waking up to work the next day. The, the twins, twins and Annabella, encouraged by their sister's success, fell asleep dreaming of their fortunes to be found and adventures to be had. While one sister was still awake, not dreaming at all. It is very difficult to dream while you clear and wash dirty dishes. B? Yes, Mother? I thought you had gone to bed. Leave those, dear. I should have helped you. You were tired after work, Mother. It's okay, I'm just finishing. B, are you happy? 
Of course I am, Mother. Why? Your sisters are all going out to find their fortunes. I thought perhaps you might want to go too. Then who would do the laundry, clean the house, cook? It doesn't have to be you. But I'm happy to do it, Mother. You're sure? Absolutely. You'll tell me if you're not happy? I will. Good night, Mother. You know, I am so fiercely proud of you, my darling. Good night, Bee.